How's it going everybody? Pete here at Spawn Fly Fish and yep, it's been a minute since we've been on the vice for you guys but without guilt I can tell you we've been doing a lot of fishing but you know every once in a while it's nasty out so here we are ready to jump on the vice and as you know it's almost time for that spring fling get out there with the new new fly rod new reel new line new flies and it's also time if you're stuck at home to do some spring cleaning so we thought it's only apropos we tie the mop fly so get your stuff ready and let's tie some flies all right everybody in the vise today we've got the core 1167 this is a size 8 and for those of you in the know this is a parachute dry fly hook so why are we using it to tie a mop fly? Well, one big reason, hook gap. So we're gonna have mop material coming off. We're gonna have a thorax built in here. One thing I don't wanna compromise is the, the hook ability, if you will, of this hook gap. And so that's why this hook for this fly. For the bead, I've got the model tactical tungsten bead. This is 5 32nd inch, and this is the orange. For my non-weighted or uh, non-lead weighted wire, I've got 0.015 non-lead, and I'm just going to get that started back here. And what I'm looking for are eight or nine wraps, and the reason is not for a specific weight; it's for a specific template for myself. Just so I go, all right. Once this is behind the bead, I know roughly how big I want my thorax to be for that finished fly. And this isn't something, you know, the first few times you tie a fly, you're going to go, oh, let's pre-measure that thorax area. It just comes from tying a couple thousand flies here and there. And this is the stuff that you'll pick up. For now, we'll have somebody that goes, hey, you should just create a space for that thorax. And there it is. So go ahead and slide that wire into the back of the bead. That bead's not going to move once we cinch down all those weighted wires. It's not going to move. And that's the base for a really strong, indestructible fly. And when you're tying mop flies, go ahead and make them as tough as you can. Because guess what? They get chewed on and they work. So now I've got some thread going. This is Vivas 140 in their fluorescent orange. And I'm just going to make some more X wraps real quickly over those weighted wires. And then I'll come through and go just straight on and touching wraps cover the whole thing, solidify all those wires so nothing moves. If the base doesn't move, the whole fly can't move. So now, for our mop material, I've got some Galaxy Mop Chenille from Hairline, fluorescent white for this one. And what I've done is, is again, that pre-measure. So I want my tail to be roughly two hook lengths. And it's not going to stay that way because we're going to tie it in here, so that already shortens it up a little bit. And then we're going to just nip the end with some flame and that's going to shorten it up a little bit and it end up being just perfect. Before we tie it in, here's a little, little helpful tip, tip for you. Super glue gel. I know, not everybody loves it, but it's all right. What we're doing is building strong, strong flies here today. All right, so let's just get this stuff tied in. And if you look where we stopped our thread before when we finished wrapping those weighted wires, that's where I want these thread wraps to stop. So everything we do in tying a fly is pretty much going to be a measurement for the next step. All right, at this point, we have got our tail built. All that's left is we're missing this thorax. But what if we wanted to be a little sneaky and add some legs? I like to add legs. Uh, one of those triggers that may or may not cause a fish to strike. Well, if it's going to, I'm going to put it in that fly, especially when it, it's you know got the space for it. So what I'm looking for here is three or four strong fuzzy fibers, and these are black. And all I'm going to do is tie these in and loop them around the hook eye, and then we'll leave that loop until we finish the thorax, and then we'll cut it and we'll have our legs pop out like we knew what we were doing. So here I'm going to tie these four pieces on this one. So it means we either have an extra leg when we're done or we trim out a leg. So here's the move. I'm going to bring 
all the fibers around the hook eye, but not tightly. So that loop that I'm leaving there, when we cut that, we'll have leg come off your side, leg coming off my side. Easy peasy. So get that tied down. I'm going to adjust these fibers so that they're coming off just below the line of the eye of the hook. And I'll show you what that looks like there. And I'm pretty happy with that, but we'll finish that in a little bit. So now these tag ends of, of the strong fuzzy fiber can just be clipped out. Here's your side, give me my side. Bingo. All right, pretty simple so far. We've got one last element to tie in. And for this, I'm going eyed peacock sticks from Hairline. I've got four hurls that I've cut from that stick. And what I'm gonna do is come up roughly two inches or so from the tips. And that's gonna be my tie-in spot. And so I'm just gonna get these tied back all the way. Remember we talked about that thread spot underneath telling us when to stop for our tie-in of our next element. And that's what this is all about. So right here, I've got my peacock tied in. Before I get up to those legs, go ahead and trim out those excess tips. And now we're kind of coming up to those, what will become the legs. I'm just gonna let that thread rest right there. Let's take all four strands of peacock now and just gently begin to twist all the ends in our fingers. And what will happen is all four hurls turn into one hurl, making a rope of sorts, much stronger, much fuller, and let's just start wrapping this bad boy. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Peacock, as you can see, as I'm wrapping these, these hurls, there's an iridescence, a natural iridescence. I'm just gonna spin up a couple more times as you go. Don't forget to spin some more. Keep those hurls nice and tight. And that iridescence, as this moves and blinks in the, in the water and that light hits it and glints off of it, it is just irresistible to fish. So there we are. Now, I had to turn that thing upside down to get that last wrap of peacock in, and I don't mind. So now, very carefully, try not to disturb those legs as much as possible. But we do need to solidly, solidly, solidly tie down that peacock. All right. And that is going to do it. Carefully trim out all that peacock. Be mindful of those legs. That's why we tie in four. So we can be less than mindful once. All right. So now. Bring those down again and again. Let's see how we're looking on this side. All right, pretty groovy so far. At this point, grab your whip finisher. Make sure you got strong fuzzy fiber attached to it somehow. And then let's whip finish this guy. So just gonna come in, be mindful of those legs. So I'm not putting a lot of pressure in my left hand. And that allows me to easily bring that that knot or the thread around those legs every time see that no pressure all right Ta -da. hold pull down that thread really sink that that finished whip finish knot in there and trim out your thread now real quickly i've got some loon hardhead clear here and behind that orange bead, now you see why we chose this orange thread. It just pops. And so we're going to have not only a nice little contrast from that light colored tail to a dark colored thorax, but we're going to go contrast again to that bright colored bead. And, and I don't know about you, but I am a big, big fan of contrast in my flies. Whether it, it makes me catch more fish or not. It could be up for discussion, but I will say this. If you fish what you have confidence in, you're going to be a better fisher. All right, and there we go. Nice layer of glue on all those thread wraps. And got my scissors ready. As you can see, we still have that loop. Not perfect coming in the center, though. Cut those, and as you can see, they already kind of want to move 
like little caddis legs that are just sticking out of a casing. So get those situated where you want. As far as length of trim here, I just want these to be less than the hook length when they, when they come back. So I'll just gently kind of pull them back. Go, oh, that's close to the hook length on my side. And I'll do the same on your side. And nothing to it. One that got away there. And there we go. Let me give you some background here. And so you can see when this thing gets going, you're gonna have a lot of movement with this tail just flowing off the back. These little legs are actually gonna be bouncing in the water. Tough for us to see, pretty easy for the fish to see. Hot spot says, come get me. Thorax of peacock. I don't know if it gets any better. One last step. Let's solidify where we cut that chenille so that it cannot come undone on itself. And we're just gonna kiss it with a little bit of flame there. Melt that core, nothing to it. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please remember to hit like and subscribe, tie up a pile of these, go catch some fish, and we will see you on the water.